My instruments were laid out like a surgeon's. Battery-powered beard trimmer, razor blade, shaving cream, bowl of warm water, and warm washcloth. There was a towel spread on the bed. My wife Mary came in, fresh from the bathroom, and lay down with a towel under her. Naturally, she was naked and sporting a lush bush. I took the beard trimmer, and as soon as I turned it on, she jumped off the bed like a wild banshee. You won't touch me with that thing. You can cut with scissors, but you don't shave me. She spewed venom as she spat out these words. I completely lost interest. This was supposed to be a prelude to pleasant sex between husband and wife. I just got out of bed, got dressed, went to the kitchen and opened it a beer. I'm tired of playing her fucking games. My wife and I have been married for 28 years, and in all those years there hasn't been a single week that I haven't asked Mary for permission to shave her bush. She always categorically refused, that is, until two months ago. It was my turn to cook dinner, so I brought pizza to go. I actually had two pizzas, a cheese pizza for her and a pepperoni pizza for me. Mary looked at the pizza and said, Jack, you need to lose weight. Give up the burgers, fries, and pizza. Lose 25 pounds in six weeks, and you can shave my bush. It didn't sound like a bad deal because I wanted to lose weight, so I just got my motivation. The next morning, I went to the doctor, who recommended diet and exercise. I had been meaning to go to the gym for a long time, but that morning I did so. I had never eaten so much salad, and my muscles were constantly sore. However, I lost weight. In fact, I lost 31 pounds in six weeks. Today was supposed to be a big payday, but it wasn't. Mary wouldn't let me touch her, and for the first time in my life, I refused sex. I'm done asking to shave the bush, let it become a fucking forest. My name is Jack Anderson, I'm balding, I'm 49, a little overweight and out of shape. I work as a real estate broker and do not work in an office. I pay a secretary for this and usually only work by appointment. I work primarily in commercial real estate. I'm fine, but real estate is a business out of turn. It's feast or famine. I've been in business a long time and made good investments in the good years and just treaded water in the bad years. I'm not complaining as the property has been good for me and not having to keep a watch is worth a fortune. I consider myself lucky. Mary and I have been married for 28 years. We met in college and got married when she found out she was pregnant with our son. His daughter followed, but my wife persisted in college and earned a degree in accounting. A year later, she had this CPA paper at hand. Our two children, Ben and Debbie, both graduated from college, moved out, and started families. My wife is blonde, 48 years old, 5 feet 6 inches tall, weighs about 120 pounds, almost the same as she did in college. She has generous C-cup breasts, and I never tire of giving her special attention. Mary's first job was working in a large accounting office located in downtown Dallas. She has worked for the firm for the past 20 years and now heads the department with her secretary. She has a team of five accountants who work under her. Sometimes, but not often, they travel as a team for inspections. They typically travel on Wednesday, conduct the audit on Thursday and Friday, spend Saturday writing the report, and return on Sunday. The agency has multiple audit teams, and travel rotates between teams, so they only have to travel two to three times a year. We always had a good sex life, or so I thought. Every day when the kids were younger, but recently only a couple times a week, I still have the desire, and, of course, I could perform more often, but Mary is either tired or not in the mood. I try my best to keep the romance going by sending her flowers to the office, bringing her coffee from Starbucks, taking her to lunch once a week, and always having dinner and dancing on Friday nights. We always do something together on Saturday, and then on Sunday we get lazy and try to spend at least the morning in bed. I love her just as much, if not more, than the day we got married. I was sitting in the kitchen drinking coffee when Mary came in. She just put on her robe. She poured herself some coffee and sat down. Jack, I'm really sorry. I know I promised you, but when you turned on the beard trimmer, I couldn't stand it. I've been proud of my bush my whole life, and I just don't think I want to part with it. How about just tidying it up with scissors? No, I will no longer touch on this topic and will not raise it. But I must admit, I am very disappointed. 
I feel like you misled me by pressuring me to lose weight and promising a special reward if I did it, which I didn't receive. I feel like there was blackmail, coercion, deceit, and lies involved in this little situation. We have been married for a long time, and I have never felt so humiliated by you. We rarely argued, and if we did, we immediately kissed and made up. This time we were strangely silent for several days. I felt like I did everything she asked and more. Why should I bow down and ask for forgiveness? What exactly did I do wrong? Lost more wheat than needed. We got up, had breakfast, went to work, and then came back after work, all without talking. Did I forget that we didn't have sex? Finally, after about ten days, I reached my limit. What exactly do you want? Why are you still angry? For some reason you think I'm to blame? Yes, it's all your fault. If you hadn't been pestering me to shave my hair off since we got married, this wouldn't have happened. Why can't you just accept me for who I am? In all the time we've been together, I've never forced you to do anything you didn't like. Not a single detail. Did I come to you and ask if I lose weight? Will you let me shave your bush as a reward? Did I suggest it, or did you? Stop playing games. You know I suggested you lose weight, but I couldn't go through with it. So shoot me. Why has this become such a problem? Can we just call a truce and go back to how we were before? I agree. Let's just not discuss this anymore. I am tired of this. So, our lives resumed much the same as before. However, I was still dieting and still going to the gym every day. If Mary noticed this, she said nothing. Sex, at least for me, has become more bland. She just didn't have the interest or desire to put as much effort into it as she used to. We have lost something in our relationship. Was she perimenopausal? I knew that my wife's team had to travel at the end of the month and they were always tiring and stressful trips. I made it a rule to cook dinner every night and bring fresh flowers to the house. Mary always came home to find a glass of chilled wine waiting for her. I tried to make her feel special and know that I cared about her. My wife, despite numerous attempts to buy sexy underwear, has never worn anything overtly sexy. She has the body of a model, but she's never shown it off in stylish clothes, let alone lingerie or heels. I watched her packing the night before and wondered what I could do to make her change her appearance. That evening we had regular vanilla sex and I still felt like Mary was hiding something. She did not want and did not help to spice up our sex life. The goal was to get rid of me as quickly as possible so that she could sleep. She was just doing her duty. The next morning at breakfast, I asked if her regular team was traveling with her, and she said yes, including her boss. Senior management had been restructured, so she found herself with a new boss, and he wanted to come along to observe and learn how the team worked. They met at work, and a van was ordered to take them all to the airport together. Typically, when traveling, Mary calls every evening and we exchange several messages during the five-day trip. I only received a call from her once. It was during lunch, and she was in a hurry. She apologized and simply said it had been a crazy ride. I wasn't too worried because she never gave me the slightest hint that she was cheating. Mary returned home around four o'clock on Sunday afternoon, about three hours after the plane landed. She apologized for being late, saying that the boss wanted to meet with the team before sending anyone home. She was exhausted and just wanted to shower and go to bed. I told her to go upstairs and I would be right behind her. I wanted sex because it always felt great after a trip. When I entered the bathroom, Mary had already taken a shower, wrapped herself in a towel, and was brushing her teeth. I told her to go to bed and I'll be right there. I quickly took a shower and was soon in bed with her. She complained that she was tired and asked her to wait, but I said that I missed her and wanted to make love before she went to bed. She reluctantly agreed. We started kissing, and eventually I went down to her breasts. I didn't disappoint her. I moved down her body, and when I got down there, something was missing. Her fucking bush was gone. I sat up, looked at her, and said, What the hell happened to your bush? Mary looked at me and said, Jack, nothing happened, and I did this for you. I answered, this is bullshit, and you know it. What's happened? You're smooth as a baby's bottom. 
I don't think you could do this on your own. Tell me what happened. Then I got up and got dressed. I went to my home office and just cried. I knew that my loving wife had cheated on me, most likely several times. This was new ground for me. So I went online and Googled how to tell if a wife is cheating and evidence of cheating by behavior and marks on underwear. Several things came up, including if she came home and took a shower immediately, check. She did just that. Check her underwear for any marks. I slipped upstairs and found her sleeping, so I looked in the dirty clothes basket for her underwear. I didn't find her granny panties that she usually wears, but I did find a sexy pair of thongs with semen residue on them, which was indisputable proof that my beloved wife had sex with someone right before she returned home. Mary said that she always considered Jack and I's marriage to be almost ideal and happy like any other. We were always there for each other. We have always done everything together, including raising two wonderful children. Jack was my rock. I am so ashamed that I let him down and now see my life in ruins. I never wanted or needed sex like Jack did. Two or three times a week was fine for me, but he could do it every day. I thought I was happy with what we did with each other sexually, but since Jack was the first guy I'd ever kissed, let alone done anything else, I was very inexperienced and naive. Sometimes I wondered what it would be like to have sex with someone else after having fantasies. I grew up in a very religious and conservative family and have extremely prudish ideas about my appearance and behavior. Jack constantly encouraged me to wear sexier underwear, fancier clothes, and heels. I've always found it more comfortable to wear granny panties and girly bras that leave nothing on show. Jack even pestered me after our wedding to shave my bush. I'm proud of my bush. And besides, if it were shaved, I would never be able to pass a medical examination. Because good girls don't shave. I would be so embarrassed. So I never did it or even thought about experimenting with anything Jack ever asked for. My accounting agency recently restructured senior management, and I found my department under a new boss, Eric Thompson. He was 10 years younger than me, very handsome and very domineering. For the first time in my life, I felt completely submissive. I'm not saying that I like it, but I find that it is exciting, awakening new feelings in me that have not been awakened for years. I get a pleasant feeling just from being in his presence. When Eric announced that he was going to an audit with my team, I realized that he was going because he wanted to have sex with me. I was very nervous because I have always been completely faithful to my husband. I had never been hit on, but I was secretly flattered that such a handsome young man was interested in a woman like me. After the first day of testing, I found myself alone with Eric in my room, and he took no time in removing my clothes. I was completely under his control, and I liked it. He laughed at my underwear and said we'd figure it out tomorrow during lunch. When he saw my bush, he said that he would not tolerate this. He was in charge, so I didn't say a word. Finally, he took off my clothes and said that I was hiding a model's body under these terrible granny underwear. He made love to me like no one has ever done before. Eric is a big man, much bigger than Jack, and when he had sex with me, I was in heaven. He was resilient and could love me for 30 minutes. I only allowed Jack to have sex in the missionary position, but Eric and I have had sex in several different positions. In fact, I only had Jack to compare Eric to, and there was little comparison. Eric kept his word and shaved me the next day. I didn't say a word, but I realized that when I returned home, I would be in trouble. I admit, I felt sexier without hair. Eric and I went shopping for new underwear and clothes. I simply accepted all of Eric's suggestions and realized that this was what Jack had wanted me to buy for years. We had sex every chance we got before leaving home. I felt dirty when I walked home because I didn't take the time to wash myself. I wanted to take a shower at home. Naturally, after the trip, Jack wanted sex as soon as I got home. I did everything I could to get rid of him, but Jack was persistent. And in the end, I agreed. But only after a shower. I wanted to wash Eric off of me. Jack started making love to me, and when he realized that I had shaved, he immediately realized that I had cheated. I couldn't shave myself. He got up, got dressed, and went downstairs. I found him in the kitchen. He was drinking coffee. And I realized that he saw right through me. He knew I was having an affair. We just coexisted for the next few days. 
I continued to dress in my sexy clothes, and when I saw Eric again, I had a long lunch that included amazing sex. I felt like a new young girl and couldn't wait to be with him again. We actually saw each other a few more times before Jack dropped the hammer. I felt that he did this because of my actions. He was very angry and got straight to the point. If I want to stay married to him, I have to quit my job and end things with Eric. I told Jack that I couldn't just up and leave because I had worked there for over 20 years. He said that I had made my choice, so I got up, packed my things, and left. Jack made my life hell, and somehow he got photographic evidence, and after it was exposed, my life and work turned to ashes. My life as I knew it was over. Jack said he thought about the members of her team. They were all married and much younger than Mary. They worked together as a team for a long time, and I trusted each of them. They were almost like family to us. All that was left was her new boss, and I didn't know him at all. For the next few days, I watched my beautiful wife get dressed every morning, pretending that I was still asleep in bed, but I could see what she was wearing, and it was all very sexy even thigh-high stockings and heels. I realized that the only time Mary could really have a relationship with someone was during lunch, so I sat across the street in the cafe every day, watching the employees enter. I didn't see her until Wednesday when she went out with a man several years younger than us. They got into his car and drove away. I didn't have to keep an eye on them, as I sat with my cell phone open in the Find My Phone app and watched until the dot stopped moving. I enlarged the image and made a note. I later found out it was the Hampton Inn. That evening, my wife came home on time and asked me why I had not prepared any chilled wine or dinner for her. I said, cook your own fucking dinner. I grabbed a bottle of red wine and disappeared into my office. That night, I slept in the guest room. One thing I knew for sure was that I had no plans to have sex with Mary again, since there was no doubt that she was having sex with someone else. What if she got an STD? The next morning, when Mary got out of bed, I was gone. I was waiting in my lawyer's office when he opened the door at 8 in the morning. Frank was a personal friend of mine and had most likely gotten rich from the work I had sent him over the last 30 years. I told him about my wife's affair and wanted him to start filing the divorce. Also, I wanted to take some action against her boss, but I wasn't sure how to proceed. Frank said there's not much we can do without hard evidence. I needed ironclad proof. Texas is a no-fault state, so it would be easy to divorce Mary. Frank suggested leaving the case for a couple of weeks and hiring a private detective to collect evidence. Frank sent me to what he considered the best detective in Dallas. And judging by how much he charged, I'm sure he is. I explained what I needed, gave him a photo of Mary, and explained that the last connection took place over lunch at a Hampton Inn not far from where she works. He said be patient, and he could give me what I needed. We simply coexisted for the next few days, barely saying a word. Where the hell was she going to go with our relationship? Finally, on Sunday, I had enough. Knowing that I might fail the detective's investigation, I asked, Mary, what's going on? We just live together, not as husband and wife. Jack, there's a lot going on at work, and my new boss is very demanding. So he's the reason for all the sexy lingerie and new clothes and heels? Did he force you or did he shave your bush? I'm guessing he also had sex with you when you got home last Sunday? You did everything I always asked you to do for some bastard who just recently showed up in your life. Is he married too? Oh, and I bet he has kids at home. I cannot express in words how much pain you caused me. Do you still love me? She didn't answer but simply cried. What do you want me to do? Are you interested in saving our marriage or do? You just want to continue living as you are now. Saving our marriage is the most important thing in my life. Mary, quit your job. We don't need money. If you continue to work there, your affair will continue, and that will be the end of our marriage. I will not tolerate being cuckolded. I can guarantee this will be a messy scam, and you will end up embarrassed and lose your job either way. Mary must have thought I was bluffing and replied, I can't leave. I've been working there for over 20 years, and I love what I do. Is this your answer? Is your job worth more than our marriage? 
Jack, I didn't say that. I said I don't want to leave. I got up and left the kitchen. I packed two suitcases, collected the office things I needed, and loaded them into the car. Mary came out and asked what I was doing. Mary, you have made your decision, and I am no longer involved in this matter. Just don't forget that I warned you. So, when everything goes wrong, don't come to me crying. I checked into the Hilton Hotel and called my kids to explain that I was leaving their mom. I didn't tell them why, just because we didn't get along. Naturally, they were both disappointed. I called the detective and explained that I had moved away from home and he needed to keep a closer eye on Mary. Now she had a lot of time to play. The next day they played at lunch. The detective reported to me that he was able to make an audio recording, but not knowing in advance which room they would be in, he was unable to make a video recording. He was able to take photographs of them, getting into the car, getting out of it, and entering the room. He asked if I suspected it might happen again, and I replied that it probably would. The detective was going to bribe the clerk to make sure they entered a certain room so he could install a camera. They returned the next day, right on schedule. I was able to get over an hour of footage of them having sex in multiple positions. Then they chatted, and Mary admitted that I knew about them and was worried about what I would do. He told her not to worry because he could take care of me. This guy was several inches taller than me and weighed at least a hundred pounds. I felt a little threatened. That same day, after watching the tape, I took it to Frank. I wanted revenge, and quickly. Serve Mary immediately at her work with adultery. Send the tape to her bosses and everyone on her team, as well as the bastard's wife and any member of his family who has an email address. I have instructed Frank to send me a copy, and I will make sure that my family and hers receive it. I wanted to destroy them both. Next, I asked Frank to see if the accounting firm could be sued. The organization must have some moral standards that do not allow management to take advantage of subordinate employees. At least we could sue for sexual harassment. The next morning at 9 O'Keen, the shit hit the fan. Mary was served at work and a group email was sent at the same time. A few minutes later, Mary stood in front of the CEO using a conference call since he was in Atlanta. She was killed on the spot, as was her lover. Now the CEO had to deal with a $10 million lawsuit against the agency. He wasn't happy. A few minutes later, my cell phone rang. Finally, I answered, Yes, Mary? Jack, how could you do this to me? Mary, didn't I warn you on Sunday that this would quickly turn into a nightmare? You chose your job and your lover over me. I told you I wouldn't tolerate being cuckolded, but you had sex with him again on Monday and Tuesday. I suspect that once his wife watches the video, he will have a lot more time to have sex with you. In fact, I suspect you both will have a lot of free time. I'm guessing you're both unemployed right now. I heard Mary crying on the phone. Is there any way to restore our marriage? Mary, what do you think? How many opportunities have I given you these past few weeks? Now I wonder how much you ever loved me to treat me the way you do. In all the 28 years that we have been married, you have never done anything like this for me. Nothing. Then you go away for five days for work and come back dressed in everything I've always asked you to wear, plus a shaved bush. I should have left you then. Do you really think I'm that stupid? You need to take everything you want from the house and find a place to live because I'm going to sell it. It's a 50-50 state, so we just split everything. I will give you 60 days to do this. Otherwise, I will donate everything to charity. After that, I only communicated with Mary through my lawyer. I didn't care anymore. I didn't know where she lived or what she did. I asked my daughter if her mother had dated this guy, but apparently she hadn't. She said her mother was depressed all the time. The accounting firm wanted to settle out of court. But I asked Frank if he could put the lawsuit on hold until the divorce was finalized because I didn't want to split the money with Mary. After the divorce, I won't have to share. About two months later, Frank called and said that I was a free man. He said the accounting agency had now agreed to settle the case out of court for six million. So I told him to go ahead and settle. Even after I split everything with Mary, I had about five million in investments and real estate. With the addition of settlement money, I decided I no longer needed a job. I found a buyer for my agency, and that brought me another two million. By this time, the house had been sold and the money divided. I decided it was time for me to move on. 
but I wasn't sure where. Florida is a state of either young people or old people. I didn't want to add to the old statistics, so I decided to take a world cruise first before making a decision. I called my kids and asked if we could all have dinner together since I was going out of town and didn't have a return date. The daughter asked if she could bring her mother. Of course, why not? The dinner was good, but the sight of Mary almost broke my heart. She lost weight and was treated for severe depression. She lived with my daughter. I just thought that you girl made your bed and now you're lying in it. She hardly said a word the entire evening. I explained my cruise plan and hopefully we'll find somewhere to live. Everyone except Mary was happy for me. As we stood up to leave, Mary came up to me, kissed me on the cheek, and wished me luck, and then said before turning around, Jack, I'm so sorry I ruined our marriage. It was all my fault. You were the best husband anyone could ask for. I feel so ashamed. I didn't see the point in rubbing salt into the wounds, so I just said, Goodbye, Mary. I traveled for six months and finally decided to stop in the Algarve, Portugal, which was as close to perfect as I could find. There was a whole community of English-speaking retirees there, and they were actively involved in social activities. Many were single women my age or slightly younger. According to my daughter, Mary never dated anyone else. She became even more depressed, and they had to seek medical help. The bastard who started this mess divorced his wife, lost his job, and had a hard time finding another one in the next state. Tough shit. By the way, I not only regained my physical fitness, but also lost over 50 pounds. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you, and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.